Lights in the Sky from Elon Musk's new satellite network, Starlink, have stargazers worried. UFOs over Cairns, lights over Leiden, glints over Seattle. So what is going on? This is on The Conversation today by Michael J. I. Brown, Associate Professor in Astronomy, Monash University. The launch of 60 Starlink satellites by Elon Musk's SpaceX grabbed attention of people all around the globe. It happened a couple of days ago. The satellites are part of a fleet of what will end up to be over 12,000 satellites by Starlink, a part of a fleet that is intended to provide fast internet across the world. But in addition to this, Amazon's Jeff Bezos will also add his 3,500 in lower Earth orbit, and there are another two or three companies that want to add theirs. So in total, it's about 20,000 satellites that will be in lower Earth orbit uh, trying to um, provide us with uh, worldwide internet. Now, how will we be able to gaze at the stars in the sky when we'll have all these satellites so close to us that at any point in time we'll be able to see in the sky? Anywhere in the world where people are, they will at one time or other be able to see, at any point in time, be able to see a Starlink satellite, according to Elon Musk. Now, improvement, improved internet services sound great, and Musk is reported to be planning for up to 12,000 satellites in low Earth orbit, LEO. But this fleet of satellites could forever change our view of the heavens, what the sky looks like normally. Can you imagine? Starlink is an ambitious plan to use satellites in low Earth orbit, about 50 kilometers up, to provide global internet service. This is different from the approach previously used for most communication satellites, in which larger individual satellites were placed in high geosynchronous orbits that stay in an apparently fixed position above the equator, about 36,000 36, kilometers up. Communications with satellites in geosynchronous orbits often require satellite dishes, which you can see on the sides of houses, residential apartments, buildings, etc. Communication with satellites in low Earth orbit, which are much closer, will not require such bulky equipment. But the catch with satellites in low Earth orbit, which move quickly around the world, is they can only look down on a small fraction of the globe. So to get global coverage, you need many satellites. The Iridium satellite network used this approach in 1990s, using dozens of satellites to provide global phone and data services. Starlink is far more ambitious, with 1,600 satellites in the first phase, increasing to 12,000 satellites during the mid-2020s. For comparison, there are roughly 18,000 objects in Earth orbit that are tracked, including about 2,000 functioning satellites. Now what about the lights in the sky? It's not unusual to see satellites traveling across the tw twilight sky. Indeed, there is a certain thrill to see the International Space Station pass overhead, and to know there are people living on board that distant light. But Starlink is something else. Alex Parker tweets, the Starlink satellites just passed directly overhead. They were glinting, some as bright as Polaris. Quite an eerie looking thing. And yes, the stars are out. This is what she tweeted, uh, or he tweeted Alex Parker uh, on May 26, 2019. The first 60 satellites launched by SpaceX last week were seen traveling in procession across the night sky. Some people knew what they were seeing, but the silent procession of lights also generated UFO reports. If you're lucky, you may see them pass across your skies tonight, they said. If the full constellation of satellites is launched, hundreds of Starlink satellites will be above the horizon at any given time if they are visible to the unaided eye. As suggested by initial reports, they could outnumber the brightest natural stars visible to the unaided eye. Astronomers' fears were, put to, were not put to rest by uh, Musk's tweets. Jim McPherson tweeted May 25th, I get that 
but all I see uh, ISS, but I see ISS all the time at night, and it has a lower altitude. Elon Musk says ISS is extremely gigantic and has lights. Daniel Sinchegui says tweets not a single one will be visible at night, just near dusk or dawn, which are not good observing times anyway. Also, not only also only a handful will be around in a given location. It's just not a problem. Elon Musk tweets precisely. Sats will be in darkness when starts, stars are visible, he said. So, satellites are very definitely visible at night, particularly in the hours before dawn and after sunset, and they, uh, as they are high enough to be illuminated by the sun. The space station's artificial lighting is effectively irrelevant to its visibility. In, area, in areas near the poles, Canada, including Canada and Northern Europe, satellites in low Earth orbit can be illuminated throughout the night during the summer months. Hundreds of satellites being visible to the unaided eye would be a disaster. They would completely ruin our view of the night sky. They would also contaminate astronomical images, leaving long trails across otherwise unblemished images. The United States $466 million Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, based in Chile, is an 8-meter aperture telescope with a 3,200 megapixel camera. It's designed to rapidly survey the sky during the 2020s. With the full constellation of Starlink satellites, many images taken with this telescope will contain a Starlink satellite. Longer exposures could contain dozens of satellite streaks. Dark skies or darkened hopes? As there are, as uh, is there any cause for optimism? Yes and no. Musk has produced some amazing feats of technology such as SpaceX Falcon and Tesla cars, but he's also disappointed some uh, on, on other projects such as the Hyperloop Tunnel Transport Plan. While Starlink certainly blew up on Twitter for now at least, Musk is 11,940 satellites short of his 12,000. Also, initial reports may have overestimated the brightness of the Starlink satellites, with the multiple satellites closely clustered together being confused with one satellite. While some reports have indicated that binoculars are needed to see the individual satellites, they also report that Starlink satellites flare momentarily because they become brighter than any natural star. William Keel tweets, watched Starlink pass from Tuscaloosa, bought four minutes late from Cal Sky prediction, some flare to magnitude minus two, others stayed binocular only objects. Location of flare seems pretty consistent with the sky for one that did flare, pictures to follow. And William Keel again tweets, peak 15 degrees from Zenith, 3.5 second exposures within 30 second period shows consistent location of flares and short durations. Arcturus at bottom of frame, last frame not flaring once, some in binoculars as faint as magnitude minus seven, he says. Now, if the individual satellites usually are too faint to be seen in the, with the unaided eye, they would at least preserve the natural wonder of the sky but professional astronomers like myself may need to prepare for streaky skies ahead. I can't say I'm looking forward to that. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.